Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this morning, I'm going to be doing the uh, uh, subscriber requested coconut cake. And um, I'm going to get go ahead on and get started, and I'll be talking to you as I go along. But um, this is not the old-fashioned coconut cake. I don't think you need the old-fashioned coconut cake unless you're going to put that in a uh, contest. Uh, I don't think nobody, if, you know, unless you ready to bake it that way, there ain't no sense of even bother with the uh, recipe because that's that's an in-depth uh, cake. But what I'm going to tell you what I got to, uh, what you're going to need to uh, make this uh, coconut cake. Okay. Right here I have three cups of all-purpose flour. And then this is um, four teaspoons of baking powder. It's baking powder now, not soda. Okay, now the flour, this is the brand that I use. It ain't the only brand that I use, but this is the brand I, I normally use and prefer. And this is the brand of baking powder that I use, but you know when you live in different areas, certain brands you can't find, so whatever's in your area should be the same thing. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead on and do this here before I go on with it any further with the ingredients. I take those four teaspoons of baking powder. I mix it in there with my flour and uh, I got one teaspoon of salt and I mix that on in there. I'm just uh wait a minute I ain't get all my baking powder out of here. That one do that one work out too too good. I wonder why did it stick like that? I would have a cake I'm half raised. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sift all this together. When I, I'm gonna go off once I get through telling you the ingredients. I'm gonna go off, get my mixer, and come back and start mixing it up. When I come back, I'm already be creaming my butter and my sugar. So let me finish telling you what you're gonna need. Okay. This is three tablespoons of shortening. Whatever brand of shortening that you use, you just need three tablespoons of that. And then I got two sticks of all, uh, uh, unsalted butter. But if you use salt, it's fine. Don't make no big deal over that. Because I, I guarantee you it's not going to make no difference. And then I have uh, four large eggs. And all of this right here is at room temperature. Okay. I have two cups of sugar. That's two cups of white granulated sugar. And one cup of milk, one cup of whole milk. And this is not my leaking measuring cup this time. Okay? You're going to need two teaspoons of coconut extract. Two teaspoons of coconut extract. And one uh, teaspoon of vanilla extract. One teaspoon. I basically kind of made this recipe up myself. And uh, that's all you're going to need for the cake. I don't think I left out anything. If I did, I'll catch it when I'm coming back. So let me go off and uh, sift this flour and get my mixer and uh, get it started. And I'll talk to you some more then. All right. Okay, everyone. I'm back. And... Uh, I got my butter, I got the two sticks of butter, the two cups of sugar, and the three tablespoons of a shortening in here. I already done cream, and I'm getting ready to go ahead on and add my eggs in. And you guys know this feel with the eggs. We're going to try one at a time. Oh, don't let me forget to cut this uh, mixer off. That won't be pretty. Oh, it went, it went, went in. Maybe it be the type of bowl that I be putting in. Mm. 
Now, some people make it, make, uh, uh, may have the skills where they can slip the egg on in there, but I don't trust this mixer. And when it hit that, when it hit that yolk, it's going everywhere. And I maybe let it go 30 seconds in between. I've had somebody to ask me that. I probably let it go 30 seconds in between each egg. Just enough to get it all incorporated. And then once I get them all in, I give them a, I let it be, uh, maybe probably another 30, 40 seconds before I start in with my flour. See how I accidentally turned it up? Now these eggs, ever since I told you guys, it's slip in there and when I'm doing it with my granddaughter and when they try to and she be pouring it over and two go I mean she be uh, putting the eggs in for me and try to put it one at a time two I always slip up in there I'll tell you what but now it's just going one at a time okay that's the last egg Let it beat a minute. Get them all incorporated in there together. Pretty good. And then I'm going to do a straight down of a bowl. And get ready to start with my, uh, no, you know, I always put my uh, vanilla in. I put my vanilla in and then I go in and start putting my uh, flour. Alternate my flour and my milk. Um, mix your cakes up like I mix them guys it's not hard at all it is so easy to do and um, you know taking it through those steps you remember I told you guys I always get your ingredients up just about like I had my ingredients up because you're going to have to let the eggs be at room temperature I've known people to say they were baking a cake and start mixing their butter and the eggs and and uh, then, then, then uh, went to get the flavor and didn't have any flavor. Um, I didn't have enough flavor. Uh, when they, uh, didn't have uh, baking powder and all kind of stuff like that. I make sure I got everything. Get it about 10 more seconds. I make sure I have everything that I need to go in that cake and I have it sitting out and I don't put it back out of the way until I did what I'm going to do with it. Because I have had people tell me that they baked the cake and forgot to put butter, forgot to put egg. I heard it all. <laughs> it's funny. Now that's my um, two teaspoons of coconut extract and my one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I did say teaspoon instead of tablespoon, then. Yes. I love them tablespoon. <laughs> did I care? Teaspoon. <laughs> you know, sometimes. You did say teaspoon. Okay, thank you. You know, sometimes I be saying tablespoon. I be thinking one thing and saying another. I said, Lord, Jesus, help me. Ooh, but I'm getting better. I'm getting used to trying to talk it out. Because you got to realize people that hadn't, you know, we're not professionals. And we when we was doing our baking and cooking and stuff at the house, we weren't remembering to say all of that stuff and talking to people and all that. You have it in your head what you're supposed to be doing and you go on and do it. So I'll be trying to remember to tell you and uh, tell you what, I, what I'm doing and, and the amount that I'm doing. Okay, I'm getting ready to um, start with a flower, but let me show you, let me show you guys something. Let me tell you to get this on out the way. I got three nine-inch cake rounds, cake pans. 
I got them with shortening and the flower dusted. But if you want to use some other kind of spray the way you uh, do your nail cakes, you go right ahead on. But this way I do mine and this is the way I like to do them. I got three of them. Okay. And I got my oven. Can you see over here? Well, my oven is on 375. And I will be baking this cake 20 minutes. Uh, uh, 20 minutes or longer. According to what your tooth is. Certain the tooth a uh, toothpick in and if it come black clean the dough is, is um not no wet dough or anything is on it then your cake is ready because that's going to vary according to what I mean how your oven cook the older your oven cook I mean only the older your oven is it don't really um you know it, it, it varies you'll get used to your oven you know how it cook so okay let me go in you know I told you guys you could put um third of this in at a time. You back ready? Go ahead. Okay, this is my, uh, you know, they may can't see me putting this all up in there because the way my mixer is, but they see, I told them I'm putting it in here. I'm putting it in here, and you know, I'm putting it in here. Uh, this is my three cups of uh, all-purpose flour with the uh, four teaspoons of uh, baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. But you know, I've had a lot of y'all, a lot of you guys to call me and tell me you, you know, you didn't get it or thought I didn't say it and whatever. You know, I, I, I just always answer them in, in the uh, email. Did I say call me? Mm-hmm. I didn't mean call me. <laughs> they emailed me and, tell, and was telling me that uh, I didn't say certain things. And, uh, all I can say, I thought I did. <laughs> I don't even go back in the uh, uh, e uh, the video to check. I said, well, they'll do this. If somebody else didn't get it and was interested in baking it, they'll do the same thing this person did. Uh, you know, get back in touch with me to ask me what did I say. machine do not play. I don't know why I did that. It was just showing up. I had no reason in the world to do that. So I wish Kelsey could see that. She think it's funny when that stuff splat all over the place. As she watches videos and said, you see that? Never had this platter. So okay, you just let this um, maybe about 30, 40 seconds. And uh, then I'm going to go in with the other half of my flour and the rest of that uh, cup of milk. Was I trying to tell them something? You know, I've, I've noticed how I've been saying something and forget to tell them. Oh. Okay, so. Oh yeah. Uh, to the young lady, I haven't gotten around to answering all my comments yet. Uh, I've heard them, but I haven't went back and answered. I mean, any of them that I was gonna say something to. But to the young lady, asked me how long. I mean, what? Number. What number? Uh. What, what was that question, Derek? I told you about that. What that number on your stove? You have your seven on. Oh, she asked me what number on the stove, because I said medium high or medium low. That's what I be saying. But she asked what number did I have that it was a set on, on my stove and when I was frying the pork chop. So I had it set on six. Sometimes I go between six and five. If it started getting a little too uh, high, I'll drop it back down to five. But I had it set on six, sweetheart. Okay, 
Let me put the rest of the flour in. You know, when you're doing a cake recipe now, they'll tell you don't bake it. Don't beat it for so long because of, what's that? The gluten and stuff will get started up in it. I don't hear so many things. I said, well, that must be something. Well, back in the days, some older cooks weren't too worried about gluten because they were beaten by hand and it wasn't going to It must have mattered that way. But, uh... I don't know. The scientists and stuff maybe figured it out that it will make you. I really have to gluten. Oh, uh, you beat it too long. You don't need to beat that anything too long, but you can't never tell why. But some people be doing. But I read that gluten would make it tight, or tough, or whatever. Push this down some more. This is thing we're trying to show out today. And I appreciate the ones of you guys that that tell me that they appreciate me taking time to uh to um show them what I'm doing with the cake, just in case I have some younger cooks. You know, I told you I'm, I always look at. The, Look out for my younger cooks and stuff. Uh, I feel that's what my call, most of my calling is trying to help the younger cooks. But um, I appreciate the um, the ones that said that uh, they, you know, they think that I do take enough time in showing. And the ones that probably, and if you see that comments when somebody saying that I take too long, the uh, as my granddaughter call them, the haters. It's probably somebody that got a channel and stuff like that and be saying, oh, she taking so long. I mean, she's really showing them how to do it the right way. And that's going to kind of show us up. <laughs> that's the only thing. I'm like, why would somebody say that, you know? Because uh, we shortening these up, shortening down these uh, uh, videos is, is all that need to be done, uh, did without just coming on here cooking and running back in and and, uh, and then show you the finished product. That's not helping nobody do nothing. You're going to do a, a, a something that probably take you a, a couple hours to, 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 to prepare in about 30 minutes, 50, or 20 or 30 minutes. I, I say it can't get no shorter. When you get any shorter, you don't even need to make a video of it. Okay. I'm going to pour the rest of this milk in. Some people say you always end up with flour. Pay that no attention. Because it doesn't end up with some flour. The last thing I put in. But uh, I'm going to pour the rest of that milk in and do a scrape down. And then I'm just going to um, let it beat off. And this, this cake right here, you guys, it makes about, it makes about four layers because I don't like when I'm doing a cake like this, I don't like big, thick, big, thick layers. So I make my layers kind of thin. And I usually, you probably can do it in, in three layers, but I usually do four layers. And uh, I, you know, I, I, in another cake rest of, um, video, I showed you how I measure those layers out. And, um, uh, but what I'm gonna do when I, I'm just I'm gonna go off and uh, put my uh, when I put it in the pan and I'll just tell you how many cups that I get into each pan because I can't remember right off. I think with this one I usually put three, just like with the other one I probably put three cups of the uh, batter into each one of the cake pans. And, uh, and this one's gonna be three layers. Three layers. Now this is going to be four layers. See what you do when you ain't got the three pans. You bake one off. If you ain't got the two pans. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. If you don't have a two cake pans. What you do. You bake two layers and once they bake. You take that cake out and use them, other, uh, and use them same pans. To uh, bake the uh, 
other layers. But um, now if I end up not putting three layers in here, yeah. Oh well. Yes. I mean, if I if I don't do four layers, oh well. But usually this this banner, I spread it out and normally make four layers out of it because I always make extra frosting to put on it. Cause, um, normally when I bake this here um, coconut cake, I do it in remembrance of my mom a lot of time. I do it at Easter time. She always bake a cake, a coconut cake, and she would put the uh, candied Easter eggs on it in the grass. <coughs> Excuse me. She would put some other um, green in her coconut and decorate the top and put the eggs on it because the kids just love it. My kids and all the rest of the grandchildren love uh, that was growing up. And any of y'all watching, you remember how mother used to fix those Easter egg cakes? So that's when I do my coconut cake at Easter time. That's really about the only time I bake a coconut cake. And I got a coconut uh, a, a, a pan that uh, I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. That had it's the shape of a, a a bunny, a bunny rabbit head. I did for my daughter when she was younger coming up. She used to love that cake. Mama baked the Mama baked the bunny head. Mama, you gonna bake the bunny head cake? I was so glad when she got old enough to where she wasn't really interested in that bunny head cake. <laughs> but it was all for. Okay, I think that's all I, I need to tell you guys because I'm going to go off and get, them, uh, get it put in the oven. And I'm going to come back in between the cake baking and show you the ingredients. I'm just going to display the ingredients as to what you're going to need to make that frosting. Okay, you guys, I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, I got two of the layers out of the uh, oven and they are cooling. I'm going to move them out of the way and the two smaller layers are... In the uh, in the oven baking, I'm gonna move the, I'm gonna move these layers out the way, and then I'm gonna show. Then we gonna make up the uh, frosting for the cake. Okay, you do, you guys. I got my daughter here today. I'm so 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 happy. You know, I told you guys she always um uh, frost the cakes and stuff for me, so. She told me, she said, Mom, it's been so long since I've been in on you making up the frosting. Uh, I want to watch you, how, watch you make it up again. Because I might bake a cake. Make, bake a cake. You going to bake a cake for your free? <laughs> you going to try this? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I got Brittany back with me today, y'all. And I think that's, you know what I told her? I said, you know what? From now on, I'm just going to wait till you come to make uh, bake cakes and stuff. Do cake videos. So, uh. You can frost my cake for me because I ain't, I ain't all that good at frosting cake. But let me tell you guys what we got. I got um, I got five cups of the powdered sugar, confection sugar, confection sugar, or whatever. We mostly call it powdered sugar. I got five cups of that. I hope that's all that I need. And if I need more, I got some more over here. And um, uh, I got um. Uh, Two, two sticks of softened butter, which is one cup of the, uh, and it's unsalted. Uh, Brittany, if you don't mind, reach over there and get my salt. I'm going to put a pinch of salt in it. And then, uh, this is, um, two tablespoons, and if I need more, I'll get it because I, you know, normally I don't really, when I'm doing this, my regular confection sugar frosting, I may not even put milk in it. Especially in the summertime because it gets too loose. But I've just got some heavy cream. And the only reason I got the heavy cream in there. You can use heavy cream. No problem. The only reason I got heavy cream. That I had some left over. And I need to start using it. And um, I'm going to put. One teaspoon of vanilla. And anywhere from one to two tables, uh, teaspoons of coconut extract. This time. So. What I'm gonna do, stretch starting out. This is what they call the butter butter cream uh, frosting. Uh, 
frosting. I'm going to put just a... See how much it is? I better put a little bit more because that's unsalted butter. I'm going to call this here one eight teaspoon of uh, salt. <laughs> Spread it out all over there. Take my knife and kind of get it mixed up in there. And I'm going to go in and put my, uh, I'll tell you another way, uh, you guys, this coconut cake is uh, delicious. I have did it and not put just the buttercream um, frosting on it. I put the, put cream cheese in it. I did so many things and stuff with cakes. You guys, I didn't realize how many different things I did with the cakes that, um, I didn't realize it until I got to, I mean, I started these videos when I went back trying to remember what and how, because, you know, when you're fixing it for yourself, you fix it, you fix it to, to, um, to your likings. You're the one got to eat it. It's your food and your home. Now, unless you carry something out. Now, when you going to carry something out for the public or some kind of gathering, Make sure you do that right. I always do the best, especially when you're taking it to the church. Uh, I take it to the church, it's going to be 100. <laughs> okay, let's put the uh, butter over in it. Why are you cutting the butter up? Uh, because I don't get my butter really soft. Because the softer you get that butter until that butter start hardening back up in that filling, it'll make your filling too loose and make it get too, uh, you know, it make the filling. I mean, not when well, it make the frosting. Because powdered sugar is real easy to melt down. You know. I move. Will you get this out of the way for me? So I move my cake. I know y'all can see it. Okay. Um. Uh, I think I'm going to wait a minute till I get this kind of incorporated in before I put my vanilla in there. So I'm going to just be very careful how much milk I put. I may have to, without an extra powdered sugar, I may have to put a extra uh, tablespoon of this milk in there. I see. Brittany, could you get me a spatula, please? Well, I like my, I don't like my margarine too soft so I can control it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. With this uh, powdered sugar, with that margarine real soft and all that, you can easily get it too loose. You know, get your frosting too loose. You got to kind of go slow with this to make sure you get your consistency right. Like when it's hot in this kitchen, You'll have trouble trying to frost that cake if you get the same. Uh, Icing cheese. So hot. Uh oh. There I go. Cut it too fast, too quick. two tablespoons if I didn't say it that was two tablespoons of that um, I'm gonna go ahead on and put my 
extracts in here so I can make sure before I go in with that milk that I got enough liquid up in here, liquids, to blend it all up together. That's my you guys see how easy I put that one teaspoon of vanilla in there that doing that extra extra uh flavor like I normally do. But I want it. If I go extra, I go extra on this in coconut. <laughs> Since this is a coconut cake. In case that spoon wasn't made right. Not it. Okay. We'll start out with an extra tablespoon of the um um uh, not gonna start out right now. Just a little bit more with egg. That's an extra tablespoon. You know, I had two tablespoons originally. Extra tablespoon of what? This. The uh, milk or cream or whichever one you use. Oh, I thought you thought I were talk, talking about the flour. want y'all to see this process. That's the reason I'm doing it like that because I had somebody to ask me about the uh, frosting. Getting too loose on them. But I think I explained it to her well enough to understand. Okay, I'm going to increase the speed a little bit.
do a scrape down. Brittany, put me another tablespoon of that cream in here, please. Okie dokie. Thank you. Okay. Now You guys, when I come back on, it'll be Brittany, and she'll be frosting the cake for you. tablespoons of that cream that was okay. yeah two at first and then okay. we did no I did two at first and then I put the egg from it made it three I didn't use that one yet now if you use milk you probably would just only use that three two or three tablespoons but this cream is a little heavier I'm gonna put just a little bit more of that in there That shit good. I hope I ain't got it too loose. about the consistency of my frosting. It's right at the right consistency. Where it won't, where the butter won't start melting up on it and uh, getting well. Uh, it's too loose. See what it looked like? Can you see it in the bowl? Yeah. Yes, you can see it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go off and uh, let the cakes um, cool down, and when they cool down, my daughter will be back here to frost the cake for you. Be right back. Oh, you guys, I forgot to tell you when I was telling you the ingredients for the cake, I forgot the main player is the coconut sweetener. I mean, the sweet coconut flakes. And when I do, uh, now I do a cake where I put the coconut in the frosting, but we don't really like that like that. So we always just uh, put the frosting and then the coconut on there so we can control how much coconut in it. My family like coconut, but you cannot give them a whole lot of Now let me step out of the way. And I'll be out of the way and Brittany fixing the frost this cake for you guys. Okay, everybody. There's a little bit of frosting here on this cake plate to keep the cake from sliding. I have this layer right here that I'm going to place down. This is going to be the bottom of our cake. 
going to place it here. Press it down slightly. And I am going to get started. I'm going to take this spoon and put, I don't know measurements like a, my mama, so I'm just going to put enough to where I think I can cover this bottom layer. Won't be a whole, whole lot. You want the majority of your frosting to be for the top and the sides, but you want to put enough to get it all, you know, well incorporated. So, my mama has all these fancy gadgets in here. I don't have none of this in my house, but <laughs> when I'm at her house, I use them. And this is a icing spreader. So I'm going to gently spread out the icing. It's very important to spread it out gently. Icing can tear up a cake if you're not too careful. So I'm going to go around in this little motion here. I don't know what you call it. I'm going to try to spin the cake plate around with me. I'm going to add more. I'm just trying to get this right here that I got on spread out. Cause this isn't enough for the whole layer. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna add this whole spoon just in case I don't need it. And for those of you that caught it, my mom has said my name several times throughout the video. But um, I know the last time I was here, see what I mean about being careful? I'm going to try to cover that up with this frosting. Uh, my mom was doing a giveaway in the question you had to get right was what my name is and what was the first video that I put on her channel and she said my name several times my name is Brittany and the first video I put on her channel was the low carb meatball casserole I've been watching my mom for a minute you know low carb is my thing I had a lot of success as far as with weight loss for low carb, continue to do it until it continues to work for me or stops working for me, or whatever that is. I think I got it pretty well spread on the top. Now I'm going to take this butter knife and I'm going to go around the sides just a little bit. I don't typically do the sides too much until. Um, I get it completed, but I go around just a tad to make sure I got the icing all coming out to the side. I'm trying to be careful with this little side here where the cake was looking up. I'm trying to put some more frosting right there just to make sure this layer that I put on top of it will stick like it's supposed to. It's the bad thing about the low carb lifestyle when you got a mama that makes all this good looking stuff. Y'all see what she be making. All the banana puddings and the coconut cakes. And coconut cake is my favorite. I love it. So, that's the bad thing. But I won't lie and say I don't sneak a little taste every now and then. Because I do. But don't tell anybody. Still mainly low carb over here. Okay, I think I got it pretty much all out to the sides here. So I'm gonna go through and make sure. Then I'm going to get ready to add the second layer. Now. Oh, 
No, I'm not gonna add the second layer. Layer. Next, I'm going to sprinkle the coconut. It's like forget the main ingredient to a coconut cake. Just gonna sprinkle the coconut on top. Uh, I'm gonna add about how much I think should go up here. If you like more, you add more. If you like less, you add less than what I'm adding. Um, but again, you know, you gotta save the majority of it for the top and the sides. So I'm just gonna make sure it's enough to have it all incorporated and tasty in between the layers. Now, I'm gonna add the um, second layer. I don't know how much this was. I just sprinkled to, but do it to your liking. Coming in with this next layer. Um, those of you that know how to frost or don't know how to frost a cake, you add the layers upside down until you get to the top layer. Then you put that upright. And um, most cake layers don't come out even. So to get an even cake, you when you layer them, you layer them to the adjoining side. So this side of the cake is a little thicker. So I'm going to put the thinner layer of this cake on top of the thinner side. I mean, the thinner layer of this cake on top of the thicker side. So I'm just going to lay that on top. Press it down gently. Don't press it too hard. You don't want it to tear up on you. And I'm going to go in and add some more frosting. Frosting the cake has been my job ever since I was a little girl. I've always loved frosting the cake or plain. I thought it was plain. It always looked fun to me. And then, you know, I got to lick the bowl afterwards. Now, my nieces love to do that job. They love, especially my youngest niece, Kelsey. She loves to be in the kitchen with her nana. But you know, makes fond memories. They'll have fond memories in the kitchen with they nana when they grow up. And again, I'm doing it like I did the bottom layer, sort of spinning the cake plate around to help me thin it out. My nieces really get a kick out of they nana having a YouTube channel. Especially with um, her subscribers and how well her channel is doing, they think they nana is really, really something. Which she is. We know that. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more on here. Try not to get too thick in between the layers because again, you need the majority of the frosting for the top and the sides of your cake. But you want enough to where you don't have a dry cake in between and where your stuff is going to stick. Again, be gentle with it. Frosting can tear up a cake. And try to bring it all the way out to the edges of the cake. So your next layer sticks well. I'm gonna switch to using a butter knife so I can get towards these ends better. Sort of taking it from the top where it's a little thick, bringing it out to the sides. Don't think I'll have to add any more icing to this layer.
again don't typically ice the sides until I get it all layered up then I go in and ice the sides all at once but just try to make sure I get it all the way to the ends I think I got this one pretty good now again I'm gonna go through and sprinkle some coconut not a whole whole bunch but enough to make it a coconut cake pretty much gives y'all the gist of how you ice a coconut cake um, I'm not gonna frost the whole cake on um, camera so I'm about to go okay, off Brittany, I'm gonna have to stop the camera a minute your battery luck is trying to get low so go okay. ahead on so I'm about to um, uh, finish frosting the cake off camera and we'll come back and we'll show you the finished product okay everybody this is the finished product product of the uh, coconut cake and uh did my daughter do a good job as, as uh with frosting the cake I told you guys she can really do a good job frosting frosting is not one of my better points points because I uh, don't have the patience but um we gonna uh, let my husband move back move out the way and uh then me and my daughter gonna come back in and serve you guys a slice of the uh, coconut Okay, everybody, I'm going to go ahead on and end this video before I cut your slice of the cake. But first off, I want to thank my daughter for um, icing the cake, I mean, putting the frosting on the cake for me. And sh this is a long weekend for her. And I hope I can get you to um, do another video, at least one more video for me, Brittany. I love for her to do the videos for me because when she do the videos for me, I get to eat something that I haven't cooked myself. So you going to be doing another video for me? Sure. <laughs> okay. Now you guys know I can't cut no cake. And I'm glad. To, and you know if I was doing it for somebody, I, I wouldn't cut it at all. But, um, Brittany, can you cut, cut a slice of cake better than me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not good at cutting cake. I know. That's the worst thing, cutting cake. Okay, let's see that go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, I'm going to cut your nine size slides, but not as big as I did that other time. <laughs> okay. Can I cut our way through it? Let me see if I cut our way through the cake. All of this stuff is kind of tricky doing it on camera. Oh, cupping that everywhere. Let me see you guys see it right. What about that? How about that? Do y'all like that slice? I'll tell you what it was at the piece that, um, hold on a minute. The piece where, uh, I forget that you always put some on there to, uh, make it stick on the, uh, that is one of the reasons I don't, like, usually put, uh, coconut in my icing. It makes, it makes the cake hard to cut to me. But all right, you guys. I'm going. I'm gonna go ahead on and have I ended the video already? No. I'm gonna end the video. Let me turn this around so you can see where I got my slice out of. Get that out of the way. I'm gonna put this on the plate and eat it. Oop. My daughter. She's on that. Sh this is one of her favorite cakes. I kind of felt bad asking her to. Ask the cake for me because she's on that uh, 
What's the name of that, that uh, plan, you know, food? Uh, yeah. Keto? Keto? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's on the keto uh, um, plan right now. Lifestyle change, change she called it. Uh, eating change or whatever it is. I feel kind of bad. Let me sit my chair back up there. She got to decorate it so cute. You hate to cut it. But um, anyway, she... Uh, I don't know if she's going to be able to eat any of this cake because of the uh, uh, weight. I mean, what what you call it? The food chain, the diet, all these diets and stuff. I mean, what she said, I would, mama don't call it the diet, lifestyle chain. So, if it's a lifestyle I told her, I said, if it's a lifestyle chain, then you can eat a slice of something every now and then. Oh, okay. So, but anyway, you guys, I appreciate you coming watching this video. I mean, watching this video for, uh, with me, uh, watching my daughter uh, put the frosting and stuff on the cake and watching my channel. And you know the spiel that I normally get twisted up on. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already uh, subscribed to my channel, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified. And um, uh, give me, leave me a comment down below. Uh, as my granddaughter can say, as long as it's a nice one, I can do without the neg negative one. So uh, I see you guys in my next. Come on over, Brittany. Say, say, uh, say, say bye to the to the guys. Cause you gonna get to see her in a lot more of my videos. We gonna say bye. See you guys next time.